So we're now in our next video in the foundation and history of mathematics. We're still in part two, and I cut the video because this is Egyptian arithmetic. We'll be needing some time to 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 uh, operate. So despite it, the cumbersome notation system, the Egyptians developed an extraordinary extraordinary efficient method of doing arithmetical calculations. So we're going to um, look into the the way Egyptians um, do the multiplication and division by doubling. Okay, so calculations were done by a series of steps requiring doubling numbers. So doubling is, you know, multiplying it by two, simple as that. And then adding up some of the results. Knowledge required uh, before we can um, get to know it or, or, or um, some prerequisites. We know we must know how to add. We must know how to multiply by twos. And, and uh, um, that's pretty much easy to do. Um, what is not required is how to multiply by 3, by 4, by 5, or any other number system. So what we need is only doubling, okay? That's what um, ancient Egyptians will or, or is, is um, good. Okay, so well, look, let's look at one example. That is 13 times 24. Um, in two columns, we will write the number 1 on, in the left column, as we can see here, and the other and, the, and one of the above numbers in the right column. And we chose 24 because um, it's best to operate with the higher number. Now, generally, choosing the larger number to write is the one that works best. Um, if we're going to use the other number, we need we are required to have a lot of doublings instead of less. Okay, so that's that's the that's the thing. We need to choose the bigger number so that we need to double less. In this example, the 13 will be called the other. Okay, the other number. Now, what we will do is double each of the numbers in the first line. And we will also do the same in the second line. So doubling 1 by is 2, um, doubling 2 is 4, doubling 4 is 8. And then we also double the numbers on the right-hand part of the column or the right column. 24 becomes 48, 48 becomes 96, 96 becomes 118, 18 plus 12, and then 192 then. So um, we continue this number in the bottom left position. Okay, we can we can continue this rather until okay until the number in the bottom left position is more than one half the other number. Okay, is more than one half um, of the other number. Okay, so in this case it's thirteen. Okay, it's thirteen. So we can see that um, one half of thirteen is. Is something like 7.5 so 8 is more than 7.5 already so what we will do is we will place a tick mark on the numbers in the left column that add up to the other number the other number is 13 so we need to find the numbers and then add, an, add them up just like in the binary systems so we have 8 plus 4 is 12 plus 1 is 13 so meaning we're going to put some tick marks there so this is our tick marks Okay, and the breast procedure is to start from the bottom, of course, the highest value, because we need to get the highest values first. So 8 plus 4 is 12, and then plus 1 is going to give us 13. So hence, these numbers, or these, these um, rows are chosen. Next, for every line with a tick mark, copy the number in the second column out of the right. So we're going to copy 24, one of the chosen number with a tick mark, 96, and 192. Add up the numbers in the right hand column and we have then 312 as the answer to our problem 13 times 24 is equal to 312 okay and that's how our egyptian uh, the ancient egypt egyptians uh, did that Okay, so this works because 1 times 24 plus 4 times 24 plus 8 times 24 will get the common factor, which is 1, which is 24. So therefore, we have 24 times 1 plus 2, 1 plus 4 plus 8. This is going to give us 13 times 24. So therefore, that's a proof that um, the, Egyptian, the, the Egyptian way um, is, is, uh, is done. And it's true. Okay, so... Now let's consider a more complicated example. So you know, um, if, if if it works with the smaller numbers, it it can work, okay, with bigger numbers. This works well for larger numbers too, and compares favorably favorably with our manual system of multiplication. So let's try the numbers two four six times seven six three five. So two hundred forty six times seven hundred sixty 
7,000 rather, 7,635. So um, we'll have this example. Um, we'll choose again the one here on the left column and we'll choose the bigger number, which is 7,635 um, on the right. And then we'll double it. Okay, though the doubling is more difficult, but it's manageable. 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 1, 2, 8. So these are the binary numbers, the the the, the one that we use in, in, in storage, uh, in everyday storage right now. So 7, 6, 3, 5, double it, double it, double it, double it, double it, double it, double it. So we have these numbers. And then um, we're going to choose the, the numbers which can add up to 2, 4, 6. So we may start here with 128, but the animation starts with 2. So anyways... Here, there. So 128 plus 64 is going to give us 192. Um, 32 plus 192 is going to give us um, 224. Uh, and then 224 plus 16 is going to give us um, 240. And then 240 plus 6 is 246. Good. Okay, that's good. Let's put some tick marks there and then we'll add, we'll get the values. So therefore, tick off the entries on the left column and then add to 246. That's correct. Write the com corresponding right column and press off to the side and add them up. So we're going to write it here so that we won't get confused here, 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 and here. And then add them up. Um, believe me, it's 1,878,000. 210. Okay, so that is our that's our value for our for, for the product of, of 246 times 7635. Now let's have this the division by doubling this time. Um, we will be using the same process for division, but we'll go about it somewhat differently. This time, you double the divisor successively, stopping just before the number reach would be greater than the dividend. So our terminologies, again, let's just remind ourselves that we have 100 divided by 25 is equal to 4. 100 is what we call our dividend, 25 is what we call our divisor, and 4 is what we call our quotient. So let's have one example. So we have 300 divided by 14. So we'll have one here, and then we'll put the divisor on the right column, the divisor. So strictly, it's a, it's a divisor. Um, we don't we don't choose the the bigger number because, well, obviously the bigger number will be dividend in the arithmetic. So we'll use the divisor there. In two columns, write the number one on the left and the divisor on the right. Now double the numbers in both columns until the last entry on the right is more than half of that of the dividend. So half of the dividend is 300. Um, or rather, half of, uh, half of 300 is 150. So 224 is more than 150. Um, here, the last entry is 224. Since doubling it gives us more than 300 in the values. So we'll place tick marks beside the entries in the right column that add up to as close as possible to the dividend without exceeding it, okay? As close as possible without exceeding it. So 224 plus 112 would be beyond 300. So we need to choose 224 plus 56. 224 plus 56 is going to give us 280. Now 280, we can still add up. Um, we cannot add up 28 because that's going to give us 308. But if we're, if we're going to add up 14, it's going to give us um, 296. So therefore, we need to copy the we'll tick put some tick marks there likewise here then copy the numbers in the re left column on the same lines as the ticks into separate columns and add them up so similarly in multiplication we have this similar pattern but not exactly the same and then we're going to add them up so we have one for 16 that's going to give us 21 and 21 is our quotient okay so 21 is our quotient okay so as a check Add up the ticked numbers in the right column also. We're going to add them up. And we know the answer is 294. This gives us 294. So 14 goes into 300 a full 21 times with a remainder of 6. Okay, so meaning our complete answer is 6 because it did 294 did not reach 300. Instead, there's a 6 which is missing there. So therefore, our answer will be 21 equals 21 remainder 6. Okay, so the division process does not give exact answers though because it has some remainders that we need to take care of. Um, specifically, it doesn't give us an exact uh, decimal representation 
of the answer, but the answers are good enough. Okay, it's good enough. Okay, so it's an arithmetic system for practical use. Okay, the main problems that a scribe would have to solve were such things as determining the area of plot of land assigned to a farmer, um, which is also a multiplication problem. Okay, that's when they will use the multiplication um, arithmetic, um, which we have shown um, in, the, in the first part of the video. Or they are dividing some commodity into equal portions in which they can use the division, um, which we also showed uh, just a while ago. So um, where is where can you see this this arithmetic of the Egypt? Sir, if it's so ancient, how can we make sure that there exists such system? Are, are we sure that, that they, they exist or maybe someone just, just um, um, created them? Well, there are... Um, there are evidences. So Egyptian numbers can be seen in the Rin Papyrus. This is around 1650 BC. So we can see the calculation calculations there. Okay, so pretty much they're using arithmetic in doing the arithmetic the calculations with their number system. And also it can be used. It can be seen in the Moscow Papyrus, which is around 1850 BC, in which they use the pictographs. And then they are solving. Um, something here using the arithmetic and let them do the solvings there. This is in, in hieratic, as you can see here, and this is in the hieroglyphic pictorial, picto, 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 uh, pictorial notation. So this is in, in hieroglyphics, this is in, is in hieratic, so um, evidently they are using um, the arithmetic Okay, um, way back then. And that's the end of our video for the Egypt. Okay. Um, next up, we're going to learn um, something in Babylonia, okay, and then how they do their arithmetic system and um, um, pretty much um, other things about Babylonia. So that's it for Egypt. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope that you would like and subscribe, and see you soon for more videos. Okay, thank you.